this TaxSlayer Pro training video, we'll look at the 2015 TaxSlayer Pro Online Income Tax Preparation Program, or what we call our Pro Web version. We'll go over the setup and briefly look at how to do a tax return in the TaxSlayer Pro Online version. Here on this screen, we've logged in to our account and we're at the welcome menu. Now the welcome menu is what we consider the main menu of the program. It's the first screen that the program takes you to every time that you log in to your office account. From this main menu, you'll find nine menu options that contain functions pertaining to the program. Each part of the program can be accessed by clicking on the gray select button. The helpful information section to the left of the welcome menu contains links to common websites and forms. The configuration option enables you to set up office information, edit or delete information for EROs, repairers, and fees. And within the office setup, you would enter the office name, DCN, selected bank and sales tax percentages, and there can be multiple addresses entered. To add an office address, simply select the Add button. To edit an office address, you would select the Edit button. And the same process can be done to add office phones and so forth. Once your office has been set up, click the Continue button. Next in the Configuration menu is the Electronic Return Originator Setup, or ERO Setup. And to add an ERO, select the Add button. To edit ERO information already entered, select the Edit button next to the ERO entry that you would like to edit. Once you're finished setting up the ERO information, you can select Return to go back to the Configuration menu. You can add up to three types of addresses for each ERO entered into the ERO setup. The three address types are Physical, Mailing, and Shipping. If the addresses are the same, one entry will be sufficient. You'll also be given the option to add up to three types of phone numbers in the ERO setup. The three phone types are Home, Business, and Fax. To add, change, or deactivate preparers that are stored in the program, select Preparer Setup. To add a preparer, select the Add button. To edit a preparer's information, select the Edit button next to the preparer entry that you'd like to edit. The default PIN number is a five-digit number that's used in place of the tax preparer's signature on all electronically filed tax returns. The preparer's default PIN number can consist of any five digits except all zeros. The preparer, if this box is checked, can only see the tax returns that he or she has prepared. In this area, you will enter a unique username and password for each preparer. This is the username and password that will allow the preparer to log in to the program. A preparer's username cannot be changed once it's entered and you exit this menu. The password can contain any combination of numbers and letters. The length of the password can be between 1 and 15 characters and the security question and answer will be used to identify the preparer in the event that he or she forgets their password and needs to reset it. Enter the security question and answer in the spaces provided. A preparer can be temporarily or permanently deactivated by unchecking this box. Once deactivated, the preparer's username and password will not be recognized by the program. The preparer will not be able to log into the program until the Active button is checked. 
The security template allows the preparer to be limited to certain functions or areas of the program. The security template is set up and assigned at the company administrator login. To see what each template means, simply click on Show Definitions. The security template limits the preparer to certain functions or areas of the program. To create these templates, simply select Add Security Template. You can name the template, check the items to allow access, and once you've checkmarked the access points, click Continue. You can also edit a pre-made security template by clicking the Edit button next to the template name and unchecking those boxes that you don't wish those preparers to have access to. And the final step will be to assign a security template to those preparers in your office. Now we'll create a new client's tax return using the TaxLayer Pro Web version. Beside Start New Tax Return, I'll click the Select button and I'll see a message reminding me to get my client to sign a 7216 Consent to Use Tax Return Disclosure before beginning the return. And the first step in creating a new return is to enter the taxpayer's social security number in the spaces provided. Now to ensure accuracy, we're required to enter the social security number twice. We'll click continue. Now if no prior year data is found for this social security number, I'll see the message below. Next, we'll select the client's filing status by choosing the filing status that best suits the client. If we're not sure of which filing status to select, we have a filing status wizard that we can consult. The filing status wizard will ask a series of questions that will help determine the correct filing status for the client. For this client, we'll select single and click continue. Next, we enter the taxpayer's personal information into the program. The personal information will be pre-populated if the client came in last year and I've pulled a return forward from a prior year. Otherwise, I'll be prompted to fill out the basic personal information, name, date of birth, occupation, address, and phone number for the taxpayer and spouse, if applicable. And at each entry screen, I need to fill in all the information pertaining to the client. The resident state return option will allow me to select the taxpayer's state of residency. Once the state has been selected, when I click on continue, this will prompt the state questions. The program will create the state return based on the state selected. If there's not a state return to complete, I would choose none from the list program will automatically transfer all of the necessary information into the state return for me. The next step in the process are to enter dependents or qualifying persons. If my taxpayer is claiming a dependent or another qualified person on the tax return, I would select the yes button to begin filling in the information pertaining to each dependent. To bypass the dependent entry menu, I simply select no 
I'd then be prompted to enter the dependent's name, date of birth, social security number, relationship to the taxpayer, and the number of months this person lived in the taxpayer's home during the year if I were to select yes that there was a dependent on the return. For this little practice return, I'm just going to enter no. There are no dependents on the return. The income portion of the federal section is used to enter all items of income on the tax return. I'll be given two options from the main income page. I could select Guide Me to launch a step-by-step -step series of questions in order to help determine the various types of income that should be entered on the tax return, or if I prefer to enter in items of income without the help, I would select Enter Myself. This will take me to the income entry screen which lists the various types of income that should be reported on the tax return. I can select a begin or an edit button to enter or edit an item of income. We'll begin with a W-2. Here on the W-2 screen I've entered all of the information from my client's W-2 onto the screen Notice there's a checkbox here indicating this is a standard W-2. I've entered the employer's identification number, the employer name. The client's address, zip code, and state automatically pull into the employee section. I've entered the wages from box one and the federal tax withheld from box two, the social security wages, tax withheld, Medicare wages, and Medicare tax automatically calculate. If I need to make any changes in these boxes, I simply click into the box and make the change. Continuing on with the W-2, I select my client's state information, enter the state employer identification number, the state wages automatically fill, so all I need to do in this section is enter any state income tax withheld. Next, I'll hit the continue button, and here I can edit this client's W-2, add another W-2 wage statement to the process if I need to, but again for this simple return I'll just click the continue button. At the deductions menu I can enter in any adjustments that my client may qualify for, such as a medical savings account, educator expenses, health savings account, moving expenses, self-employed health insurance, alimony, things of that nature. Enter these amounts simply by clicking on the Begin button. Back at the Deductions menu, if I click on Standard Deduction, I'm told that the Standard Deduction is automatically calculated based on my client's filing status and will be compared to the itemized deductions if I choose to enter any itemized deduction. The deductions that benefits my client the most will be used on the tax return. Under the itemized deductions category, if my client had medical or dental expenses, mortgage interest, gifts to charity, things of that nature that would qualify him to use the itemized deductions, I would simply click on the begin button and enter those amounts into the tax return. For my client, we're going to use the standard deduction, so I'll click the continue button and return to the deductions menu. Here, if there are any credits to enter, I would click the begin button. If my client had or qualified for a foreign tax credit, child care credit, education credits, things of that nature, I would enter those in here in the credits menu. Next, to compare deductions, click the Begin button, and the program tells me that based on the information that I've entered, the following shows the comparison between the standard versus the itemized deduction. As you can see, the standard deduction is quite a bit more for my client, so I'll hit the Continue button, and we'll use the standard deduction.
We're now in the Other Taxes menu. If my client had filed a Schedule C and needed to use the Schedule SE self-employment tax, self-employment taxes would automatically calculate. Any other taxes that we may have to enter into the program for my client would be found in this menu. Now if my client had made any estimated payments, any quarterly estimated payments for 2015, here in the Payments and Estimates menu I would enter those. Any state estimated payments made by my client, I would enter those here. Any other federal withholding or other state withholdings, I would simply enter those amounts. And we'll hit the Continue button for my client. Any miscellaneous forms, injured spouse form, claim of a refund due to a deceased taxpayer, application for extension, the 4868, IRS identification PIN, if my client's identity had been compromised, we would enter the PIN number here. Now, as a result of the Affordable Care Act, we must now answer a series of questions for our client regarding health insurance coverage for members of the household. Verifying coverage, verifying this health coverage is mandatory. This is the health insurance questionnaire. The first question we see, did you or your family have health insurance at any time in 2015? Our client needs to answer this question correctly and below are some examples of health care plans. For our client, we're going to answer yes, he did. And we hit the continue button to move on through the questionnaire. Next, did my client purchase health insurance via healthcare.gov or a state marketplace? We'll say no for my client and click continue. Next we need to verify household members. If there are any additional household members that are listed as dependents, we need to click the dependents button and verify that those dependents also had health insurance. My client is single, so we can click the continue button and move on. Was the entire household or was my client insured for all 12 months of 2015? We have a selection that we can make, yes or no. I'm going to indicate yes for my client and click the continue button. We're now at a calculation summary screen and I can see the refund $902 for my client. I can review the total income, adjusted gross income, the total tax, payments that he had withheld from his W-2 and the refund amount. I can click continue. I'm finished with the return and my return is now ready to be electronically filed to the IRS. My next step will be to select a federal return type. Again from my client, just to keep things simple, I'm going to select an electronic mailed check. In other words, the IRS will mail a check directly to my client's mailbox. I'll click Next. The PIN numbers are automatically generated by the program. I'll click Next. This screen leads me to the third party designee info. We're going to leave all that as prepare. And I'll click Save. At the submission screen, I would have the taxpayer sign the return. I could also print the return. And if I scroll down, I can either save and exit the return and e-file the return later, or go ahead, save the return, and transmit the return to the IRS at this point.